Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Summer of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog. And today we are going to talk about Absolute Carnage number four, which just hit stands today, October 16th. And uh, I have a lot to say about this issue, so I'm probably going to get into some of the spoilers, some of the details, uh, because I can't hold back on this one. I really did not like this issue. I know a lot of you guys out there, some of you may not be surprised at all, uh, but let me explain why. And, you know, overall, the art is fantastic. I mean, I can't really... I'm always going to say that Ryan Stegman is a master at what he does and he's great at drawing and the artwork in this is very fantastic. But I feel like once again, he just got like a subpar script and uh, this isn't me trying to like, you know, take to, you know, a, a deep dig at Donny Cates because uh, obviously this is just my opinion. You know, you guys, d you know, think differently a lot of times than I do, uh, but I, I got to explain why this issue just didn't work for me uh, overall and why I, it frustrated me with the other tie-ins because it felt like, it felt like it ignored them to some extent, and and that seems comes across more egotistical than than you know working with your fellow coworkers and actually trying to hash out a good story and doing what's important for the story. Um, that's what it felt like in this. I felt like uh, oh, Salad and Ahmed, you're writing a pretty good miniseries over here, but I don't really care, you know, uh, where you you know end Miles in that book or some of the events that happen in that book because I'm just gonna just pass over them in this one and just not even reference them. And it's kind of like. Okay, like I, I guess uh, this is my issue with uh, Jonathan Hickman with some of his uh, current X Men stuff. Now, granted, I haven't read X Men number one. I didn't pick it up today. Um, I decided to pass on the series for now, and maybe I'll buy it when it goes on sale on Comicsology, and I'll try it out then. Uh, but uh, I feel like sometimes there's a race between a, a writer's ability to write a good story and their ego, and I feel like Jonathan Hickman's ego is just in the lead. And I feel like a little bit here with Donny Cates as well. And again, that's just my opinion. You guys don't have to agree. Um, but let me know your thoughts down below after you watch this video. So uh, before I get into it, I want to give out digital code. So boom, there you go. First person to put in that code gets Absolute Carnage number four. And that's courtesy of House of Secrets and Marvel Comics because they put those codes in the books. And obviously I buy these issues at House of Secrets. So uh, definitely support them. If you're in the LA area, go stop by and check out their store or buy stuff from them online. They got a lot of good stuff. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, this issue itself just kind of derailed things for me. I was kind of liking where they were going with the first three issues and I was like, you know, hey, all right. Uh, the third issue though, I will admit, started to lose me a little bit, but not too much. Like I was still, felt like the train was still on the tracks. Uh, but in this issue, I, I didn't feel it at all. All this hype and, and big buildup for this Hulk versus, uh, you know, Carnage battle or this Venom Hulk versus Dark Carnage or whatever you want to call them. Um, you know, as they're fighting, it's just like, it's like three pages i think it starts off with this big awesome splash page where it's like you know them busting through a wall and uh, and then it immediately has this you know dialogue from eddie brock he's going like oh crap of course i'm censoring it but he's like oh crap and then it cuts to eddie brock and he's like you know monologuing in his head about things and you know i'm so weak and my suit left me because it thinks i'm weak and it went to the hulk um which was a bad decision because hulk gets his butt kicked in like three panels it's like thanos beating him up at the beginning of infinity war so I know that's probably what Donny Cates' inspiration was on some level where he's just like, all right, Hulk and Venom, this is going to be the toughest thing ever, um, but he doesn't really stand a chance. I mean, he and we don't even see that much of a fight, which is also the frustrating thing because I just that's what I heard about this was, oh, man, this fight is so brutal and so deadly. I think even Donny Cates posted that, but it's it's three three pages. I mean, it's like it's not that intense at all. Um, it is kind of gruesome in, in the last two pages, but the first page, splash page, you get the, you know them busting through a wall. Then it cuts back to Eddie Brock. He tells Peter, hey, watch the kids. Make sure nothing happens to them. Come in this, you know, secret room that Rex had. It has weapons from the jury in here. And this is also where the Avengers are resting because we pulled the codices out of, you know, the thing, Wolverine, Hawkeye, and uh, Captain America. And so he's like, you know, stay in here with them, protect them, protect the boys. Uh, meanwhile, that's not the room that Spider-Man was in in Amazing Spider-Man. So there's some continuity issues there. Maybe that was the room they started off in and then they end up back in. Uh, but they, you know, they're not in there <laughs> in, in that book. Um, so there's one little minor continuity thing, um, but not, not the end of the world. Some of these continuity things don't ruin the books at all uh, for me. But some of them kind of, you know, like I just I'm wondering why they just didn't put in that extra little bit of work to tie it all in better together. And when people when I see an opportunity to to work harder and to do a better job and it's not done, it that does frustrate me because it's like, hey, I'm paying five bucks for this issue alone. And it's like 20, 22 pages or 20 pages of art and story like the last issue was. And that's frustrating to me. Like, I, I was like, hey, man, it's not worth five dollars. Make this three ninety nine. I know it's an event book and everything, but there's so many tie ins to this. So, like, you know, slow it down and 
uh, and lower that price on these. I mean, it's too late now, obviously, but you know, for future reference, if you're going to give us 20 pages story, and granted, it's 20 beautiful pages by you know Ryan Stegman, and it and clearly he worked his butt off on this for sure. So I'm not saying like there's no value overall in the five dollars, but when you look at like earlier issues, what you got for like six ninety nine or seven ninety nine versus this, it's kind of like. That's that's the yardstick I'm you know I'm, I'm measuring it by. It's not it's not about just about the quality of art because if it was you know obviously it's worth it on some level because it's uh, Ryan Stegman's artwork. But you know to you know devil's advocate and backpedal a little bit and go back and forth. It's like yeah I see I can see where the argument could be made for the value. But for me when issue one was eighty pages or something like that, or sixty pages of story and art for seven ninety nine. So half of that should be 30 pages, right, uh, for $4, if you're going by that metric. Um, and I know it's it's a lot to ask of an artist to draw 30 pages every month, so I'm, I'm not surprised that it didn't happen. But if you can't meet even the 30 pages for half the price, at least make 20 pages half the price. Uh, and that's the frustrating part was it's $4.99 for this book. And I was like, okay, whatever. So maybe it's really good. Let's check it out. And then I read it. And I wasn't. It was uh, it was just a bunch of random things. Like I feel like Donnie Cates is like he's like, what what do I do with some of these characters? Where do I go with this story? That's what it feels like to me. It doesn't feel like really well thought out. I mean, to to, to the point where it's like, um, you know, Stalin and Ahmed in the Miles Morales story ended that book with Miles taking back the Carnage suit, but being in full control over it. This issue. Miles shows up and he's not in control and he just tries to kill Eddie and Eddie talks him into using the Venom Blast to free himself, which Miles already did on his own in the other series. So that moment wasn't that cool to me because I'm like, I already saw him do that. And that's how he saved himself last time. I was hoping to see him show up as a Carnage, a Spider Carnage, and actually fight and help Eddie and save Eddie or something like that. Uh, but no, they, they don't do that either. And, uh, and they have Eddie, there's a cool moment where he picks up Captain America's shield and I think he grabs like a gauntlet from one of the jury members and he's like, all right, I just got to start for 10 minutes until the heroes wake up and then once they're awake you know they can maybe help me fight uh, carnage dark carnage um so and meanwhile hulk will keep them occupied for 10 minutes so i just got to get to the codices room you know with the the machine that the maker made and then i gotta make you know just lead all the enemies away from the boys and from uh from spider-man but obviously carnage shows up to fight them so they're dealing with that eddie doesn't know this and eddie's going off and fighting and he sees miles miles tries to kill him but he talks Miles into saving himself. And then Miles' first line after is like, he's like, oh my God, what happened? Did I hurt anybody? Did, did, is anyone dead because of me? And it's like, you know the answer to that. Like you, and how does Eddie know? Eddie hasn't seen you for three issues. And for three issues, you've been running around with Happy Dan and Silver Sable and J. Jonah Jameson. You know that you've hurt people. Like you bit J. Jonah Jameson. Like you, you know, it's like, I, I'm so like, it's frustrating. Cause it's like, just put in that extra little bit of hard work. Why couldn't Miles show up in this? And jump down from the ceiling and Eddie be like, you know, like maybe it's a moment where Eddie thinks he's going to die. He's like, oh, he's like, kid, I don't want to do this. And then maybe Miles goes, yeah, I don't want to do this either. I'm here to help you, idiot. And, uh, you know, he's like, what? How are you in control? And he's like, we'll talk about that later. Maybe something like that could have happened. And then it's like it would have made more sense tying it to the other thing. It's like, how hard would that have been to write? But then... He has everyone so scatterbrained and I get it. It's like the end of the world. You can easily like, you know, try to put yourself in their shoes and be like, oh, well, they're, they're not thinking straight. But when Miles sees Ven uh, Eddie, the first thing he says is, you don't understand. Uh, he's like, uh, you know, Venom, you know, Venom can't be captured by Carnage. And he's like, I know, but Venom's on the Hulk. So we're going to be fine. Let's just work on, you know, one thing at a time. And, uh, you know, and Miles says no. And they're in the room with the codices, with the machine, with all the symbiotes, and they're attacking the machine. And Miles says, no, we got to go save Venom right now. We can't let that suit end up in the, in the hands of Dark Carnage. But it's like, Eddie's like, but it's on Hulk. So like, and he's like, but it doesn't matter. You know, he's stronger than Hulk or whatever. So they go outside. They leave the room they're supposed to be in because you're going to find out later. They had to stay in that room to do something. They leave that room to go save Hulk. Uh, and, and, and meanwhile, they just easily run out. Like the symbiotes that were attacking them, just let them run by, I guess. There's like a hundred symbiotes in this room attacking the machine or trying to get into the machine. And they just let Eddie and Miles leave. I'm just like, well, that's convenient. Uh, very, you know, again, convenient writing. I don't I don't like too much. So, uh, you know, because it comes across lazy. So they just leave. No, no, like, obstacle to get out. They just leave. Miles doesn't, like, pick them up and jump out a window or anything so they can get a swing around outside. Nothing like that. They just run off the panel uh, easily with, the, with 100 symbiotes in the room. Um, so that was frustrating. They go outside, and then it's too late. Carnage has taken over. He's beaten Hulk. He's ripped out the codices, so I guess Hulk is, you know, now without a spine. I'm sure during the Immortal Hulk series, he'll be reborn. He'll have to go to the dark world or the green door again or whatever. So I'm sure they'll 
talk about that in that book at some point. But uh, he does take the codices out. Miles also spoils Deadpool versus Carnage, which at this point I hadn't read yet, but he says that Carnage got the codices from Deadpool as well. So I'm like, okay, well, that spoils that, you know, also. Um, cause obviously the reading order is going to be, I'm going to read absolute carnage four first, um, and then the tie-ins, uh, when they come out. So that was a little, I was like, okay, a little minor spoiler, but I kind of assumed that was going to happen. If you watch my Deadpool versus carnage reviews, like you saw that I, I kind of predicted that would happen because, you know, obviously Deadpool could survive getting his spine ripped out. So it makes sense. So it's not a major spoiler, but then they go outside, they, they see that Hulk has been taken over and now carnage is like a knight. He's, he's absorbed venom. And the Venom symbiote has made horns and armor on him. And now he's looking kind of like he, that he really full on serves Null because he's like, you know, decked out in black and red. And he's looking pretty awesome. I got to say the, the drawing is awesome. Um, but uh, then, you know, as he does that, he now he's super powerful. And he's like, all right, I'm going to go, I guess, wake up Null. I'm, I'm strong enough. So he starts to fly towards the sky. And then Miles says, oh, he's like, oh, or whatever. Or the heroes show up. I'm sorry. So like the Avengers show up because this ties into the Avengers one shot that came out this week and they show up and they fight uh, Dark Carnage and, and they lose in like two pages, like two pages. They're, they're like done. But like the whole thing that should have been longer. I think that should have been a longer fight. And but the Avengers thing, they did it in like a couple panels. But I was like, oh, that's kind of effective because it shows you that there the hope is lost and he's super powerful and he's, he's too far gone now to stop. It's like uh, Thanos getting all the Infinity Stones and now he's gotten pretty much all of them. Now he's absorbed Venom. Um, so now what do they do? So, the, you know, then Miles, who could have done this earlier when they were in the room with the codices, he tells Eddie, this is what I've been trying to tell you. The codices machine is not what the maker said. I saw inside Carnage's mind and I could sense what's in there. It doesn't just take out the codices and burn them and destroy them. It stores them in there. So Eddie's like, oh, so inside that machine over there that all the symbiotes are trying to get into, which how have they not gotten into it yet is another thing because Eddie just goes over with one of those gauntlets and punches a hole in it in like two punches. Um, and Eddie is not superhuman by any means. So I was like, why can't these symbiotes? Are they just that dumb and inept? Um, so so I guess so Miles is like, we go out, they go outside and he's like, no, that's what I've been trying to tell you. We have to go inside and do this thing. And it's like, you told him to come out here and save Hulk, which how is Eddie going to do that without a symbiote? So why didn't you say, hey, let's get the symbiote? And I know some people are like, oh, he's a kid. It's, it's like, but you're writing a story. Write your characters a little bit smarter. Like, especially like Saladin did a pretty good job with Miles in that book. And that, so that's why it's so frustrating, like reading this, because I'm just like, God, these, these different voices with these characters... And, and like I said, Donnie just doesn't seem like he knows what to do with these guys. He's like, how do I stretch this issue out so I can get a fifth issue out of this and do a big fight in the end? And it's like, that's what you did. You made you made a character who could have told Eddie to do a thing in a room. You had him instead tell him to do something outside. They go outside and he says, no, Eddie, that's what I've been trying to tell you. We need to go inside and you need to get the symbiote codices out of the machine or whatever. So it's like, it's so, it's so bad. I mean, honestly, that's that's just bad writing. So Eddie goes back in, frees the symbiote codices, the one that was from, you know, the thing, from Hawkeye, um, from uh, Captain America, and from Wolverine. And then he even says, because obviously symbiotes carry genetic memories and sometimes the powers of the people it inhabits, uh, he, he says his muscles feel like stone, his rage feels like Wolverine's berserker rage, um, which I don't really know how he would know. I guess he would know how that felt because the symbiotes kind of bonded with the Wolverine before. Um, but then he talks about how he is like these uh, plans in his head, these strategies and stuff from Captain America. So what I liked is like, wow, this is making like an Uber suit for Eddie. And he's like talking about getting his armor back and everything. And, and so I'm like, oh, this is great. And then the book ends and he's flying off, you know, after, you know, Dark Carnage, who's up in the sky flying away, I guess, going back to Clintar to awaken Noah. Who knows what he's going to do? Or maybe he's got a, di a different plan. I have no idea. But he's turning into the, the Grendel, essentially. He's like turning into this big bat demon creature, the Dark Carnage is. So Venom grows his wings again and goes after him. And he has this line. He's like, yeah, together we are Venom. And I'm like, that's a great line. But that's like a lot of things Donny Cates does. He writes this lofty, weighty dialogue that really is saying nothing. And he, there's a lot of that in this issue. Um, but in this one, when he's like, we are Venom, I'm like, but how? Those codices that were in his spines were from uh, the thing and Captain America, Wolverine and Hawkeye. Those were carnage codices. So how does he, how is he full black and back to Venom? That's what I wonder. And then also the, I guess the codice from, uh, from the, the normie Osborne was also in there too, who also was a carnage. So I thought like, you know, he was going to turn into like a red venom or something. And they were going to do something like that where they, you know, they changed him up a little bit. And, uh, and he has like, now he has Captain America's thoughts and Wolverine's thoughts. And 
I like that because maybe in, in the hands of a good writer, and I hope Donny Cates does this, maybe in the future it'll help him understand these other heroes more. It'll give him more of a heroic stance on things. And, but he can also see the gray areas like where Wolverine walks, but he can also feel, you know, the kind of the, the Boy Scout path that Cap walks. And I would like to see them further, you know, show that and like and, and Eddie's personality over the next like two years slowly evolve because of, uh, you know, having these digital memories or, the, uh, you know, DNA memories of these other heroes um, like Th Thing, you know, who's a, a very tragic character in a lot of ways, uh, but also is very family oriented, you know, hopefully all those things rub off on Eddie and, and evolve him as a character. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping it's not just a way to do something like cool. Cause I see that a lot of times with like, you know, Donnie Cates and other writers are just like, Oh, I did it cause it's cool. And it's like, yeah, sometimes that's okay. But when that's your answer for like five things out of like seven things, then you're just kind of like, uh, do you actually have any substance here? Do you actually do anything for a real reason? And uh, so at the end of this book, I'm like, that's cool. It's, you know, it, I guess, I guess it worked, you know, because I'm like, yeah, it's all right. Venom has his suit back and he's flying after, you know, Dark Carnage and he has the powers of four heroes who got easily defeated by Carnage just a few minutes ago. So I still don't see how, you know, Eddie's still the underdog here. Um, but I like that he's willing to do the, you know, the risk play. He's willing to, you know, sacrifice his own life to make sure everyone is safe. And at the end, he just bolts off into the sky, you know, to fight uh, Dark Carnage. So, and I think there's still like six, you know, tie-ins left, which is annoying. And that's after today's episodes, um, because today we have like uh, Deadpool versus Absolute Carnage, number three, Scream, number three, and then that Avengers one shot. So those will be coming up in the next couple episodes, but I'll probably air them tomorrow or something like that, or post them tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, I mean, and then after that, I think we still have like six issues left of this book and uh, and but only one more of the main book and so donny cates has a lot to wrap up and there's a couple threat i mean that's the thing though is he he set up a couple things in the first issue that i'm just not even expecting to be wrapped up anymore like i i'm just like ah in the fifth issue he's probably just gonna you know, like the uh, Eddie Brock being framed thing, is that going to go anywhere? Uh, probably not. Uh, it looks like they already diffused it by Captain America going like, oh yeah, Spider-Man told us everything about you. He, We know that it wasn't you, it was Carnage at, you know, Rikers or whatever. So that seems already been wrapped up in some way. The, the mass graves are, you know, are they going to, I'm guessing they're going to fly up in the air and then maybe crash land near that mass grave site or something. And then Eddie's going to fight and then maybe... I don't know, or maybe, you know, Dark Carnage is going to lead him to where Anne's body is or something. I'm, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I'm I'm curious. That I'm, I'm only curious because there's one issue left. If this was like a seven or eight issue mini or like event series, I would check out right now. That's how much I didn't like this issue. I mean, it's not horrible because it still has great artwork, but just the characters are such a mess. Like, I really just wanted to see a lot more out of the Venom Hulk versus Carnage fight because I saw Donny Cates tweet, oh, this fight's brutal. But really, it's just that one splash page and then two pages of... Of like you know hulk grabbing carnage's mouth and pulling it open getting ready to break his jaw but then these three tentacles come out and pierce hulk's brain and then kind of give him a lobotomy turn him back into banner and then cause him to be weak and then carnage you know takes his codice and it's like it's over that fast i'm like eh i, I we have different versions of the the words uh, intense and brutal i guess uh because although those are in, you know good moments i guess you know for, for that scene but it like i don't know i wanted to see more of a slugfest it's like this is your one chance to really just have like you know them go at it punch things and everything and, and, and but it's like i don't know i guess it's kind of cool that carnage outsmarted hulk in a way uh but you know what gave him the clue that he could pierce Hulk's skin like what made him think he could do that you know because he shoves those three things right into his brain gets all the way through the skull and into his brain it's like uh, I don't know, whatever. It does. I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, this book, it just made me realize, like, uh, the, the, when I go back and look at Donny Cates' run, there's some really great ideas and just some really bad execution. And this issue was, like, a clear indicator of that for me. When I read this, I was like, there's some good stuff here, but it's just not executed well, uh, in my opinion. And again, you guys are going to probably think differently. I already saw people on Twitter raving about this book and saying how great it was and how how uh, action-packed and testosterone-driven it was and all that stuff. And it's like, I didn't feel that. Like, I maybe like for two pages, I felt that. But then they, so, such in a rush to get characters to go from the inside of the building to the outside of the building, back to the inside of the building, you're just like, it's i don't know it's just it's bad structure for a storyline um so i hope the last issue really brings it home and, and turns me around on this but issue four is definitely the weakest of this series so far in my opinion still has great art but story-wise I, I i just can't man it's it's such a bummer and uh and 20 pages for five bucks i'm just like ah, i know the argument could be made ryan stegman artwork is worth that and i certainly want everyone who works on these books to get paid for the amount of hard work they put into it 
But then, like I said, I don't feel like they're, they went as hard in the hard work as they could have because there just seemed to be less communication with the other writers of the tie-ins um, based on what happened in this issue. Uh, so because of that, I kind of just like, well, how hard did they work? And, and I understand that mistakes can be made for sure, uh, but... At this point, I feel like, you know, this should be a much better well-oiled machine. Everybody should be firing on all cylinders, uh, and especially when you've got to pull it all out for event books. I think Jeff John said it really well where he was like, uh, he's like, you know, he didn't want to turn Blackest Night into an event book. DC kind of made him. So for that, he was like, well, let's make sure everyone delivers the best work of their career. And a lot of those books, those tie-ins were fantastic. They were as good, if not better in some ways, than even the main Blackest Night book. And that was because Jeff Johns really elevated the writers around him and the editors he worked with helped elevate the writers around him. But this doesn't feel like elevation on some levels. Um, it feels like some characters are written better in other books. So Saladin, I'll give you credit. You're much better at writing Miles Morales than Donny Cates is, um, in my opinion. Uh, but then there's, you know, other things that are just like just this cluster of events where it's just like we got to just throw things at it because, you know, I don't know. I don't know why they chose to go five issues because, um, I mean, I guess I thought this issue, I'm like, there's a lot that should happen in this issue. And because of this back and forth, running outside, running inside and this lofty dialogue, it just it it felt like filler. Like I was like, nothing's really happened. If you're going to do filler, at least do like. 10 pages of Hulk fighting Carnage. At least do that for filler. Um, and then cut, and then the other 10 pages are like Eddie, you know, trying to suit up and, and, and you know, and fight or whatever. Uh, and then just have him and Miles stay in that room. And then at the end, you know, just instead of having Miles and him go outside and see Dark Carnage and then run back inside, they, you know, I don't know. It's like, I, you didn't need it. You could have just had like, you know, Eddie stay in the room with Miles and then they're like getting swarmed by the, the enemies. And then Cap shows up takes the shield and says, don't worry, Eddie, I got this. He's like, you go to the machine, you know? And he's like, me and Wolverine and everyone will fight these guys. And then maybe they hold off the horde while Eddie goes and punches that machine. And then after they beat the horde, they're like, they get a head start. They're like, Eddie, we'll meet you outside. And they run outside to fight Dark Carnage. And then by the time Eddie gets out there, the Avengers have been defeated. And but Eddie's in his suit and then Dark Carnage is flying away and then Eddie can go after him. Um, and he's like, you know, I got to avenge the Avengers or something. Um, you could have had something like that. And then you could and then you were like, wait, but we didn't we saw the Hulk versus Carnage fight, but we didn't see the Avengers fight, uh, you know, Dark Carnage. Well, it's like, well, then that's why the, the you know, tie in issues out there. So go buy that. So there's just so many different ways that I would have rather this been structured or I would have structured it myself if I was working with, you know, these people that are working on this book. I would have, you know, and I, who knows, maybe some of the editors, maybe they talked about all these ideas. I had and they just ultimately didn't do them and they went with the, the options they went with that's fine if it's all intentional and stuff um, that's fine but I doesn't mean I have to like it and I, and I don't like it in this case I feel like they could have structured this way better and this issue could have been way more action-packed and not feel like a filler issue and still give you some good content and still give you some of the key moments this issue does give us but just structured in a different way um, so again like I said good ideas and I don't think a very good execution but you guys you know that's my opinion let me know what you think I'm not trying to sound like a hater I know I do in this episode but I just I'm very critical of this run and uh, this issue I was like it bums me out because like Donny Cates was really selling me. He was really turning me around on his run. He was, uh, you know, with this book, I was like, I liked issue one and I even liked issue two, even though other people were kind of on the fence about it. But issue three, I was like, all right, this is definitely the weaker one, but not by much. I still like the issue. But four, man, like, yeah, um, this is definitely the worst issue of this series, in my opinion. But if you agree with me or disagree with me, whatever it is, let me know down below and we'll continue our conversation down there. I definitely went on a rant about this one. This is less of a discussion, more of a rant. So maybe I'll title this episode as such. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I would love to hear what you guys think. Uh, you know, whether you agree with me or not doesn't matter uh, because obviously I'm just one dude with an opinion. And my opinion shouldn't sway you at all. If you like this book, I'd love to hear why you like this book. Definitely tell me down below. I'm okay with, you know, have, I, I, I like having conversations with people with opposite opinions. I think some people get hesitant. They're like, I kind of like this book, Seek, you know, but, uh, you know, you, you do you or whatever. It's like, yeah, that's fine. But tell me why you like it so we can actually have a discussion about it in the comments because that's what this is all about. And maybe you'll show shine a light on something that I overlooked. And that's that's why I like having these discussions and, and why I, I try to do more of these than reviews. This one, I just couldn't review this issue. If I was going to review this issue, I would say um, it gets like maybe a one and a half out of five. And that's just because of the stellar artwork. And the artwork should be worth more than that. But when you're drawing, you know, even though you have good drawings, if you're not drawing things that I find interesting story-wise, it does hurt a little bit too. So anyway, that's my review. That's my opinion. That's my discussion. That's my rant. Let me know what yours is down below. 
Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And we'll have more Absolute Carnage tie-ins coming up probably tomorrow. So thanks for staying tuned to this show. And make sure you don't miss out by subscribing. Thanks. See you in the future. Peace.